Hey guys, the stream. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 1970s B monster movie, Track of the Moon Beast. Track of the Moon Beast was directed by Richard Ashe. It was his one and only feature film. It was a very low budget, mostly forgotten monster B movie starring Chase Cordell, Leigh Drake, and Gregorio Sala. The film was about a mineralogist named Paul Carlson who gets grazed by a meteor with a fragment launched in his brain, causing him to transform into a reptilian creature when the moon is full. What is your first thought when you see this poster? You're probably thinking, hey, this looks like some corny, cheesy, fucking funny, hilarious, bad B-movie fun, right? You're probably thinking something along the lines of this. <laughs> Unfortunately, the film amounts to something along the lines of this. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. Blah 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 blah. This film was such a chore to get through. I honestly feel guilty watching this because I dragged my best friend Jordan into it. This is the third movie we watched that was boring as hell, and it, and it absolutely fucking blowed. And I feel so fucking shitty about that. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, dude. I, I'm so fucking sorry I dragged you into this shit. The fuck- the poster tricked me! The poster tricked me! I had no idea this movie was gonna be a boring pile of shit. The poster tricked me. And that's why I don't understand. Why do these fucking terrible, boring, mostly boring films- Always have the coolest, badass, like, kind of posters. Like Oasis of the Zombies. Look at this poster! Look at how cool it looks! And look at how shitty and dull and dry the film is! Yeah. I just... Oh, and this is also similar to, uh... Like, we're reaching boredom levels of, of course, Oasis the Zombies, but also the Clown Murders, and also fucking the Iron Sheriff. Oh, God. Oh. I reviewed that on my other show. I still got PTSD from that fucking shit. Oh, that movie sucked so bad. And I just, I feel so guilty for dragging my best, my, my best friend, Jordan, into watching this shit. You know, I feel like I betrayed him. I betrayed myself. This this film actually leaves me feeling guilty. I didn't even feel guilty watching I Never Left the White Room, and that film is disturbing, like disturbing on a psychological level. But I feel guilt like I feel guilty. Like I, I would I would even feel guilty showing this film to my worst enemy. I'd be like, man, he may have fucked me over, but man, he, even he doesn't deserve that shit. Like, wow. Like what the hell have I done? What have I done? You know? Like, God, what the hell, man? And as for the strengths, there are no strengths. None. There's one kind of catchy, decent little song in there, but you can barely count that as a strength. There's there's, there's a lot of weaknesses, though, because this film is fucking donkey shit. Okay, the first weakness is poor lighting. The lighting is so unbearably awful, I can barely see what the fuck is going on. Like, there was, there was better lighting in films made in the fucking 1920s, so this film has no excuse. No excuse. Fucking The Twilight Zone was made in the 1950, late 50s to 60s, still better fucking quality than this pile of shit. I can barely make out what was happening even if I could, this film would still be boring as all hell. And the acting. The acting is so dry. Everyone in this film acts like fucking wood. Like, throughout the entire film. There's no funny over-the-top acting that you can laugh at that can keep you entertained. No, it's just a bunch of, oh, oh, it's a lizard man. Oh, no, it's a lizard man. It's that shitty. Honestly, 
My Little Impression. I wish they would have done that. Even that would have been funnier. But no, the, the acting is just so plain. And one another really big fucking error in this film is the creature is barely in it. The titular Moon Beast, they never even call it that, I, I don't think. I, I, there are some parts I wasn't paying attention because it got so fucking monotonous. The, the creature is barely in the film, and when it does show up, it's always shrouded in darkness, except for one scene where you see uh, him transform into the creature on the table, and he just, he transforms into him, and nothing, nothing, and he doesn't escape, he doesn't do anything, so that scene was fucking pointless. This whole film is filled with pointless filler. There is nothing good about this film. I never want to see this shit again. Like, I'm, I know I've said it, but I still feel guilty subjecting my best friend, my, the man who has stuck with me through thick and thin, whether I was being the bestest friend in the world or the shittiest man alive, I had to subject him to this piece of shit film, and I wish I would have known. I wish I could time travel and go back, uh, I don't know when we watch this, I could go back and tell myself, don't fucking watch this film. I don't know what the fuck is wrong. Don't fucking watch this film. Stay away from this shit. <sighs> Sorry, I'm getting to. I'm getting into a better in a, in a bit of a rant. If if you if you guys seen this film, you would you would feel this pain. And honestly, I hope this review is more of an educational lesson. Do not watch this fucking film. Do not watch it at all. I am begging you. I am begging you. This film has no redeeming qualities whatsoever. And uh, another, uh, the basic, yeah, I basically said, yeah, the film is, as a whole is extremely boring, filled with filler, I mentioned that, and there's just long scenes of just talking and talking and fucking and talking. This film is worse than uh, Terror in the Midnight Sun, and that film was pretty dull. That was the second dullest film we ever watched. The first was what we call the forbidden film, the unmentionable film, the fucking Voldemort of films. Um, uh, I, I even forgot the title, it was so fucking bad. Uh, let's see. Creature from the Haunted Sea, and to think that that came from Roger Corman? Roger fucking Corman made that shit? That's depressing. That is depressing. But yet again, Jess Franco made uh, fucking Oasis of Zombies, and he's known for his cheesy, really fun splatter films. But that was just a fucking, uh, that, that was just a chastity bullshit crap fucking dry desert shit. And I love desert films, but I don't want to see fuck a movie that's like an hour of just desert bullshit and talking. And that's basically what this film is. There is some desert shit, but a lot of it's just bullshit mumbo-jumbo talking. There's barely any carnage. And let me tell you about the deaths, okay? I'm gonna try to recall the deaths. The first death is this guy gets scratched up by the creature, right? And as cool as that sounds, it doesn't even fucking show him getting killed. He just- the lady opens the door and his dead body falls over. And you can barely see it because the fucking- the lighting is so terrible and the lady dies of a heart attack. And then the creature jumps in the tent and it kills these these dudes in the tent. And as exciting as that sounds, it is it's so fast paced and the lighting is terrible. You can barely see the fucking thing. That it's just it, I don't even think there's really that much gore. Anyways, it, it, that was just it was just a really really shitty kill. This movie had lots of potential, honestly. It had so much potential to be an interesting. Somewhat entertaining movie about a lizard man who walks around killing people in, in some interesting fashions. But no, no, this film was just underwhelming, boring, and unwatchable garbage. So anyways, another death uh, that happens is, uh... I think the mon- yeah, the monster hits these two motherfucker- these, these cops in their heads- like, he literally does this. He's like, Conk. you know, and they and they fall dead. That is the, it, it's just the fucking, that's, oh my god, I'm at a loss for words. That's how absolutely garbage this film is. I feel insulted. I feel 
absolutely terrible for watching this crap. And the film was so bad, it didn't even have credits. It's, it, when it ended, it just, it just fades to black. No credits at all. That's how fucking bad this film was. And my bud Jordan, he wanted me to mention this in the review. He said that the fucking monster itself looked like incest Godzilla. And I gotta agree with him. The monster looks somewhat fine, but still pretty pretty limited and, you know, stereotypical. It's just not interesting. And uh, this film, I actually have some trivia here. This film was filmed in 1972, and it sh sat on the shelf for four years, and it should have stayed there. It honestly, th I wish this would have, I wish this could be lost media. I want this film to disappear like dream. I want, I just, I wish that in some universe, it would be nice if in some fucking alternate universe, some alternate reality, some alternate dimension, that this film is completely lost and nobody has the misfortune of ever finding it. This should have sat on the shelf and rotted and never be found. It should have sat on the shelf and have a fucking cave in so nobody could ever find it. I want cities built on top of this shit to ensure that nobody ever finds this piece of shit garbage film. And, um, apparently, um... The writers uh, wrote the script in a weekend, and you can tell. You can really tell. So, do I recommend this film? Are you fucking crazy? Of course not! This film is walking garbage. There is nothing interesting about this film. Nothing. Nothing at all. The characters are shit. The fucking monster is lame. The lighting is bad. There's barely any carnage. It's just talking, boring talking. And I'm not one of those fucking brainlets that thinks that things that are very heavy on dialogue or talking, that it's like, oh, that's boring. You know, things like The Twilight Zone and The Godfather. Like, specifically, uh, episodes of The Twilight Zone, like He's Alive. Very dialogue heavy episode. But I fucking love that. That's a classic. The Godfather. That's a classic. This. This is just mumbo-jumbo rambling. This is just rambling. And when the acting is so dry, it makes it even worse. For the first 50 minutes, me and Jordan were a little bit delusional. We had... It was... We had it in our subconscious that this film was so terrible that we just had to laugh and joke and fucking laugh our ass off like hyenas for 50 minutes. We, we were grasping at straws here. Real honestly. We were grasping at straws, finding little things to laugh about, like, <laughs> like I had a running joke about the monster, like, uh, like being a serial rapist or something. It, don't, don't take offense. We were grasping at straws, okay? And after 50 minutes, when we stopped laughing and we kind of calmed down, because the film itself was not really that humorous. We were just, we were just sort of, we were coping, honestly. This film was a traumatic experience. But after 50 minutes, we couldn't laugh no more. We just had to accept our deaths. We had to accept the boredom, the tedium, and the sheer evil of this film. And the last few minutes was utter hell. Like, me and Jordan were both shouting, END ALREADY! FUCKING END! So, I'm gonna have to give this film a 3 out of 10. Don't watch it. For the love of God, never watch it. Well, don't even send it to your enemies. Pretend this movie doesn't even exist. If there is anything you can take out of this video, it's to never, ever, ever watch track of the motherfucking moon beast.